Hello, I'm Stuart K. Riley, and today we are doing Metal Gear Month. I'm the first person to defend Metal Gear with my heart, but I'm also the first person to tell you not every game was great. I have played and counted down the five worst Metal Gear games of all time. And this month, we're going to go week after week looking at every single one, one at a time. Number five. Metal Gear Solid Portable Ops on the PSP. Now there were a lot of Metal Gear games put on the PSP, and when most people think of PSP Metal Gear, they think of Peace Walker. Well, Peace Walker this ain't. This game takes place six years after MGS3. Big Boss's former team, the Fox Unit, has gone renegade, and Snake and Major Zero are being blamed for it, when in reality, the Fox Unit has captured Big Boss and sent him to an abandoned Soviet missile silo in Colombia. Big Boss escapes the prison with help from Roy Campbell, who becomes the Colonel in the later games, if you don't know. And then they start stealing the soldiers from the base in order to make their own team to stop the Fox unit. Blah, 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 there's a Metal Gear, blah, 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 people with crazy powers, blah, 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 oh, fuck, a ninja! Blah, 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 genius kajumbo. Or not, hang with me here. This game is at the bottom of the list because it's at least a proper Metal Gear game that had minor involvement with Kojima. So there's at least some quality assurance here. So here's my first problem, the controls. Dear God in heaven above the controls. So the PSP lacked a right thumbstick, something they would fix with the Vita. So they had to figure out a way to control the camera. So what they came up with was using the thumbstick to move and the D-pad to control the camera. The camera kind of moves itself a little bit, but it's hit and miss. Sometimes it gets in spots it really doesn't need to be. And trying to land a headshot in first person mode is a hell of a challenge because there's not very fine and smooth movement in the thumbstick nor in the emulator. I think some of it has to to do with the frame rate this game runs at an abysmal 20 fps that's not an emulator problem that's really how fast it runs and some of these graphics and textures are close to looking like ps1 they're so pixelated i know this is because the psp wasn't very powerful but damn this game looks like a hot mess but you know what thanks to emulation we can make this look and run slightly better because you can upscale the res and the textures in pspp and there's a wonderful 60 fps patch and you know what else i can do i can map the the right thumbstick on my PS3 controller to the PSP D-pad. Now we actually have usable controls. Using the power of emulation, I have just fixed a big chunk of this game. I wish my social anxiety disorder was this easy to fix. But there's still one more thing about this game I can't stand. One of the main mechanics of this game is recruiting soldiers. Now in Peace Walker and MGS5, the way you did that was with the Fulton. You press one button and the helicopter picks them up and you go back to 61ing some scissors. Guess what you gotta do to recruit soldiers in this game? You have to knock them out and drag them all the way to the starting point of the level. Every single time. Now, don't that sound like a fuck ton of fun? Anytime you want to add soldiers to your team in the field, you have to stop what you're doing and start dragging and dragging and drag a lag a lagging. This is the worst feature of the whole game, and you have to do this because you need soldiers for your team. Now, if I don't mention this, someone will. There's an alternative. You can not only play as Snake, but also as the soldiers you recruit, and you can actually have four in the same area and switch between them. So one thing you can do is instead of dragging them to the start, drag them to one of the soldiers, call a codec frequency, and they'll get extracted. That still takes a while to set up, and I never really got much use out of it. Now, another thing I could do thanks to emulation is drag the body with the frame limit turned off. And yes, that does make it a lot faster, but guess what? You have a stamina meter, and the more you drag bodies, the more it goes down. What happens when it goes down? I don't know, maybe a pig gets its wings or some shit. I didn't let that happen. But anyway, to bring it back up you have to eat rations which brings me to my other huge gripe in this game you can only hold four things that includes your weapons if you want to hold something else you have to drop it and exchange it with something else you have no backpack no sending it automatically to your base you have four slots and that's it what i ended up doing a lot was having another soldier pick up what i dropped if he had a free slot and then when i go back to the menu i can remove everything they were holding and put it in the big 
fatigue inventory. You can't call for supplies either. If you run out of ammo and there's none where you're at, you're just out. Good grief. You know, playing this game makes you really appreciate Peace Walker and all the quality of life stuff it gave you over this game. This game is just not good. It's very clunky. The inventory system sucks. Recruiting soldiers sucks. And honestly, the story isn't that good. Most of it is told through text. There's hardly any voice acting in the game save for the cutscenes. The codex sequences have no voices at all, nor does the speech between characters on the menu. And don't tell me it was because the PSP couldn't handle that much speech. Peace Walker had tons of voice acting in it, so I find that hard to believe. The story itself is really weird anyway. They had it to where Sokolov from MGS3 survived somehow and was an actual character, and also Gray Fox is in here because why not? Of course they call him something else because everyone in MGS has 50 names, that's how Kojima rolls. It's just strange. In fact, Kojima himself retconned this game and considers it's non-canon and considers Peace Walker the real sequel to MGS3, which is surprising because during its development, he claimed that Portable Ops was, quote, a necessary component to MGS4's story to the point he refused to finalize MGS4's story until Portable Ops was complete. So that was a fucking lie. I did not like this game, not one bit, to the point where I refused to play it any further. I never even got to fight a boss or anything because when I decide a game is bad, I quit playing it. Simple as that. If you touch something that burns you or shocks you, you don't touch it again. You stop touching it and learn to never touch it again. And that's exactly what I'm doing with Portable Ops. Never touching it again. And that is number five of the top five worst Metal Gear games. Next week, we're going to start on number four and so on and so on. I better get this out of the way before I end the video. If you like Portable Ops, that's fine, okay? If you like Portable Ops, keep liking it. I just didn't like it at all. But trust me when I say you'll be on board with the next four, I'm pretty sure. Till then, I'm Stuart K. Riley of Working Man Games. Y'all have a good day.